Hello, good evening, you all, and welcome to the third session of the Friendly Beekeeper webinar series organized by Dilma Conservation. In our previous webinar, we have discussed about some of the tools and equipment required to start the beekeeper. And today, 
we are going to talk about those things further. So actually, this is the second part of our previous webinar session. Today also, our resource person is Dr. Anura Indrajit Sirisena, who is the head of the Department of Plant Sciences in Faculty of Agriculture, Rajarat University of Sri Lanka, and the senior lecturer in entomology. So I welcome you on behalf of Dilma T and Dilma Conservation for today's session. Before we start today's webinar, there are a few announcements to make. The first one is, if you missed any of previous sessions, you can visit our Dilma Conservation Facebook page and there you will find them in the video section. And all the registered participants who follow the webinar series will receive a valuable e-certificate for your participation at the end of the webinar series. During this session, there will be poll questions and you are all welcome to give them a try and make this session more interactive. If you have any questions related to today's session, please put them in the Q&A tab, but not in the chat section, or you can also put them as comments in our Facebook post. So Dr. Anurag, shall we start today's session? Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Sarindu. And good afternoon to everyone. So, uh, so last, uh, during last semi webinar, actually, we talk about uh, different utensils, so equipments, tools that we use in beekeeping. And as Sarindu mentioned that uh, we will discuss um, the same topic today. So what are the other uh, tools and equipments uh, necessary for the beekeeping? And if I repeat in the thing that I last time. So we don't want a very uh, highly sophisticated or expensive tools in beekeeping. Now, if you are a beginner, you just want actually a kind of high you as well as um, maybe a bee smoker, right? And other things actually by the time you can get. But uh, now if you, are, uh, if you are going to start beekeeping a kind of large scale, maybe you need to have um, some uh, extra uh, accessories so we can talk these things uh, first okay now um, here you can see uh, the beehive we have already discussed and bee smoker in the center and the bee whales yes it is better to have bee whales also and honey extractors and wax extractors right now uh, since we have uh, discussed about beehive last time so we'll uh, talk a little bit about the bee smoker Smoke. Smoke is actually very important when we handle bees and it's a kind of thing that essential to have uh, to a beekeeper anytime, wherever you go, right? It is better if you can keep it with you, right? Maybe in your car, you can keep a smoker, right? Now, what will happen actually when we apply smoke to bees? Why actually bees, uh, are they afraid of, of on the smokes? So what actually happened now, um, yeah. Now you can see here, uh, uh, bees, sorry, bees have some genetic uh, uh, backup. I mean, they have genetically, they, are, uh, have, they have some panic against uh, smoke because maybe due to wildfire, you know, wild colonies are staying in, co in, in forest, right? And when the wildfire uh, is arrived, so they may be destroyed, whole colonies may be uh, destroyed. Now, therefore, whenever they found some smoke, they, can, they may be very vigilant on that. And then they will uh, drink whatever the honey that they have stored in their combs, and then they will try to es escape that place, right? Now, what happened here also when we uh, exert some um, uh, puff of smoke, so they begin to uh, drink the honey that they have uh, stored in their uh, comb, right? And uh, once their stomach is full with honey, they are uh, they will be actually quite uh, calm, right? Uh, and they don't want to aggressive at all because they are they are full of honey with their, their abdomen. Then they will, I mean, you can easily handle them, right? So otherwise, when an intruder or enemy is coming in, so they will attack. 
and uh, the other other uh, side is now you know uh, bees are communicating with different by using different modes right it may be either physical communication as i told you during last time uh, the bee dances right or otherwise chemical communication now they emit pheromones not only the queen right so other workers also can i mean especially the soldiers right so they are they by uh, uplifting their abdomen so they can release some alarm pheromone right when some enemies is uh, surrounding and then other also other uh, other soldiers also uh, will aware that there is an enemy they have to fight against right so then only then they will come and attack you now when we apply this more uh, this uh, pheromonal attack this chemical attack or chemical uh, communication will be nullified right so the the chemical gradient may, may be not occur so then they cannot communicate each other then uh, they cannot uh, attack you uh, as a uh, i mean as a group in organized manner so then they are helpless right and uh, this is a kind of uh, you can see smoker so it is made up of some steel or it may be brass made thing right now uh, in in the local market you can buy this sort of um, smoker you can see the handle is there a concept things in the top and you can see some uh, box like um, uh, part right where we generate some air and through this uh, through the bottom of this uh, cylinder like things some air will be go through and this and this steel cylinder like thing is actually the one uh, that we used to have the, some fire fire chamber right and you have to put something in there something mean maybe coconut husk or some cardboard papers right or you can use some um, uh, yeah some wood shaving right uh, to generate some smoke and we should not put anything uh, strong uh, i mean uh, the chili like thing some people do that right so they put some chili uh, uh, pods in, in it to give some strong smoke that is actually not good right so you have to have uh, i mean you have to use some mild smoke right and also this smoke should not be that uh, i mean very hot right now you can uh, feel uh, the the temperature of the smoke by um uh, spraying it into your skin right so if it is uh, cool right so then you can um, give some smoke to the colony don't use some hot air right uh, hot smoke and again we should not smoke uh, unnecessarily if you over smoke what will happen so then there may be some difficulties for you to find the queen even right, if you want right therefore uh, maybe two, two or three puff of smoke is more than enough so at the beginning you can uh, put some smoke in the entrance or the gate and by uh, after removing the roof right you know there are some ventilation holes on the crown board so you can put some smoke there as well and then let the colony to settle for us for a while right don't open a, uh, i mean right away right so and if you are transferring a colony a wild colony again uh, you have to exert some smoke there then uh, they may be quite reduce their aggressiveness now uh, it is benefit i mean um, bees also get benefited because of the smoke because uh, they uh, will not attack you you know when they attack definitely they, that attack uh, bee will die i think i explained it uh, earlier as well now you know the ovipositor or the sting will ripped off from the abdomen when they attack you and as a result of that there may be some kind of holes uh, at the abdomen at the, the tip of the abdomen then there may be severe water loss and then the bee will die therefore if you are a good beekeeper uh, you should get uh, you should um, uh, try to reduce the number of attack right so for that you can use the uh, bees and uh, the other important thing that you can see uh, here bee veil right so bee veil uh, there may be different types of bee veil available uh, local in local market there may be some less expensive things and some protective kit like that right and you know some some people um, do like to use this sort of thing they use they handle bees by bare hand and without any uh, these sort of things right so just to show their braveness but problem is um, now if they attack you right so if you attack especially in your facial area so some sometime you been not able to go to work in the following day right so because uh, if they attack on your lips or the nose and uh, eyes eyes right so it may be kind of um, uh, irritation right and uh, in case of hand gloves it is better if you can use hand gloves but for some people uh, they say um, they cannot feel if you use hand gloves i mean Uh, sometimes you have to handle bees you have to scoop bees from uh, by using your naked i mean bare hand right um, 
uh, in such case you can feel uh, the bees then you you will not crush them right but if you have glasses there may be some uh, problem i mean you cannot feel actually so anyway now if you are adapted to that one uh, it's okay now then you will you can work with that um yes i always um, suggest right so you to wear a kind of uh, wear a kind of uh, bee veil like this so it is good for the bees as well as to you and uh, in in case uh, if you do not use this sort of veil sometimes they will come and uh, trap on your hair right then in, when you try to uh, remove them uh, again they will maybe accidentally cra uh, crash right and then um, other bees also will come and attack you so don't uh, so we should not encourage that therefore always recommended to wear uh, at least a bee veil when you handle bees okay i think i can, uh, you can see a kind of questions here yeah so this is the first poll for today's session the poll is what is the necessary equipment for any beekeeper what is the necessary equipment for any beekeeper there are three choices queen marking cage and the pen bee smoker and the queen cage so let's give it a try So now we can see how our participants have given their responses for the today's first poll. So what is the necessary equipment for any beekeeper? Most of the participants think the bee smoker is the necessary equipment for any beekeeper. So Dr. Anurag, actually what is yeah. the most important <laughs> equipment? Yes, um, I'm glad to see actually most of you are correct. The, the bee smoker is the most essential thing. Uh, uh, but the queen cage and the uh, the queen marking pen is also important occasionally, right? Now, uh, when you want to, <coughs> sorry. So when you want to um, divide the colony or when you want to, um, right? Uh, Sometimes uh, introducing a new colony or a new, new queen, likewise, you may need uh, the queen cage, right? But the smokers are always uh, essential to have a, uh, uh, a beekeeper, right? So your answer is correct, actually. So, okay, then, um, yeah, the, the other important thing is honey extract. Right? Now, um, when uh, the bees have produced, I mean, stored some honey, you have to extract them, especially during the honey flow period. Now, honey flow period may be uh, limited to at least, I mean, sometime uh, six weeks, right? Or um, uh, two to three weeks sometime. Now, during that time, there may be lots of honey in the comb, so you have to remove that. So conventionally, what we do is we, by use, by we remove the comb and by using a piece of cloth, cloth we um, squeeze it, right? And then we get the honey out of it. <coughs> by doing that, actually, we destroy the comb and then we, we remove that wax away, right? So then what will happen to the bees, the workers, again, they have to build the comb and store honey. So it, it is a kind of wastage of their um, time and their energy and all, right? But if you use a honey extract like this, right? Uh, now there are some local version also. Uh, you can see some um, operator here, handle, right? And when you uh, operate this handle, what will happen? It will um, rotate on the axis, right? So it will work in uh, in both, both uh, direction, right? Um, now when we, uh, now if you uh, rotate it in clockwise, right? Actually, in the left uh, side, you can see the motorized one and a manual one uh, in the right side. And uh, when you uh, rotate it in uh, maybe clockwise, right? So all the honey will, uh, one side of the uh, bee comb will come out and it will uh, collect at the uh, bottom, right? And when we rotate it the other way around, right? So the honey of the other side of the comb will also come out. Okay, now there's, you know, there in the in the comb, there's a mid wall, and from this mid wall, the wells are developing uh, uh, in, in opposite ways, right? And they store honey in both, both sides, right? And actually, once the honey is matured, they, they seal these cells with a kind of cap, wax cap, right? So you have to remove that by using a sharp knife or something like that at the beginning. And then only you have to keep these uh, super combs uh, for the extraction. 
right? By using this sort of extractor, you can uh, harvest honey with, I mean, clean uh, manner, right? I'm, otherwise, if you squeeze all the dust and things will also come into the honey, right? Uh, that is another advantage. And now having removed the honey here, right? So you can, uh, you can keep the comb back into the hive. Okay, you can keep it back in the super super box. Then uh, bees will continuously bring uh, uh, honey and they will store there. Otherwise, what they have to do? They have to make the comb and again, they have to store the honey. So it takes some time. Therefore, it is very good to have a honey extractor. Uh, uh, but the problem is if you have uh, more than, I mean, five to six colonies only, uh, you can operate this sort of things. I mean, otherwise it is uh, useless if you have only one colony. You don't want to uh, have a kind of uh, honey extractor, but if you are, have if you have any plan to um, um, expand your apiary, definitely it is better to buy a honey extractor like this uh, because of the centrifugal force. Uh, the honey will comes out from this comb when we are operating this. Okay. And another important thing is uh, we can extract wax. Okay, we can extract wax also. Now wax also have very good demand in uh, Ayurvedic and other different confectionaries and some other different um, uh, industries, right? Now most of the wax actually we use are uh, actually importing, right? From, from uh, uh, India or some other countries, right? But what we can do is we can extract uh, wax by using small uh, tool like this. Perhaps you may not be able to buy this one. Uh, you can make a kind of thing, right? And now what you need to have a kind of a wooden box, right? And in this wooden box in the top, you have to use a double um, uh, wall glass or single wall glass, right? And right below you can see a kind of aluminum seat, right? And here you can see uh, A is a kind of, uh, ex, I mean, um, container, right? Now uh, in D you can see the B wax comb, right? Now when we keep some uh, wax comb, now after harvesting, right? Uh, sometime or if your colony is le left from your hive, you can take this comb and you can keep this comb, piece of combs here, right? And the, when you keep it on the sun, right? So sunlight uh, will um, land it here. So it will enter through the glass and this will trap inside and make some kind of greenhouse effect and the temperature inside will increase. And so that the, the wax will melt and they will uh, collect it at the uh, container here A. Right, and you can use this uh, wax pointing. It's actually very clear wax. There are some other method that you can uh, extract wax. Uh, you can boil. You can put these uh, wax pieces in the boil water, right? And then you can let it cool down, and then you can again filter those, right? Like likewise, you can do. But by using this kind of uh, wax extractor, you can produce very clean uh, wax, right? So these wax you can either sell or you can use for day-to-day -day different um, things. Now this is a kind of other thing that we can buy, uh, we can get from our colonies. Okay, shall we? Uh, right. Now some other accessories are also available uh, in the, uh, that we can use in the beekeeping, right? Now, for example, a bee brush, right? Sometimes we need to remove the bees from the comb. Now, when you want to uh, transfer a colony from one to the other, right? So you want to um, remove all the bees. Uh, normally what we do is we can smoke the bees, then you can um, uh, uh, repel or um, yeah, you can remove the bees from the cones, but by using this kind of uh, brush, smooth, uh, soft brush, you can easily brush them away, right? So it is very uh, good. I mean, you can buy these sort of things from the local market even. And bee feeders, right? So now uh, there are some uh, time, especially the earth period where flowers uh, or nectar pollen is not available in the environment. Uh, so the bees may be starving. Now, uh, again, um, when the rain is there, right? So, so during that time, we have to support the bees by giving some supplementary feeding, okay? Now for that, we normally use, uh, we give a sugar syrup, a diluted sugar solution. So these bee feeders, are uh, we can use for that one. And also you can uh, uh, make very simply by using a bottle like this, right? And you can make some holes on the on the lid, right? And um, you can keep the sugar syrup inside, and you can keep it up, upside down. And that's not, I mean, very hard and hard rules here. So you can use on your own 
method. I mean, even uh, you can use a coconut shell, right? And you can keep sugar syrup there. And uh, remember uh, to keep some piece of twigs or yeah, they are otherwise uh, the bees will drown uh, when they when they feeding on that one, then they, they will die, right? So small feeders you can develop on your own. So you can use some other small bottles, right? Glass bottle, plastic bottles, water bottles like things, right? Okay, these are some accessories that you can uh, either buy or, or uh, either produce on your own. Yeah, shall we move to the... Yeah. So this is something, some other tools like this. Now here you can see queen marking cage with the marking pen, right? Now in uh, actually in Sri Lanka also some people mark the queen uh, with some different colors, but it is uh, very rare in Sri Lanka. But in other countries, uh, they actually uh, mark the queen. Uh, mark mean their thorax, we paint some color there, right? And uh, then we can easily find the queen. Now, when you want to see the queen, so uh, sometimes it is very difficult because queen court always cover the queen. Uh, some special cases like dividing or introducing new queen, likewise, right? You, you, you need to trace the queen at once, right? Uh, without taking so much time. Then you can easily do uh, if you have already, already um, uh, marked the queen, right? By using different colors. Actually, there are some color codes, coding system. But this is not much used in Sri Lanka, but um, yeah, we have to introduce these sort of things to our uh, industry. So, and here in the center, you can see queen catcher, right? Now, um, when we are handling the colony, if you have a queen catcher, it is very useful. So then you can um, uh, catch the queen and you can keep it, uh, you can carry the queen wherever you want then, right? And uh, when, especially when you transfer a colony from one place to the other, right? So you can, if you find the queen, you can capture her and you can keep it inside the hive, then all the bees will follow her, right? All the bees will march uh, toward her. Uh, then later you can release her, right? So it's very useful um, things uh, to have with you. Uh, then queen cage, right? You can see in the right hand side, queen cage. So this queen cage, uh, we can use again um, when we are dividing colonies or introducing new queens, right? So we can trap the queen uh, we can keep the queen like that. And if you are introducing new, new queen to a, a new hive, you, but all you have to do, you can keep it there in the uh, new hive, right? So then, um, because um, we cannot introduce a new queen to a colony uh, right away, because then the workers may not accept her, right? So they, are, they need some time to adapt the new queen. So you can see the, the, the walls are perforated here. So the queen pheromones will come by the time, right? Then they, they may accept by the time uh, they accept uh, this queen as their a new queen, right? So likewise, uh, these are actually not essential thing to have, but uh, if you are doing beekeeping, it is always better if you, uh, if you can add these things into your uh, tool set, because um, then once you have more and more, you can do more work, right? So, right. And uh, from eBay also, you can buy these things easily, right? Nowadays, you know. Um, okay. So here is another poll for you. The poll is, why do we need foraging plants in beekeeping locations? Why do we need foraging plants in beekeeping locations? There are four choices for you. The first one is for the pollen. Second one is for honey. Third one is for water and pollen. And the last answer is for the pollen and nectar. So it is time to choose your answer. So we can see our participants have given their responses and most of the participants thinks pollen and nectar is the important of the foraging plant. So Dr. Anura, what is the actual reason to uh, use of these kind of foraging plants in our area? 
Yes, uh, Tarindu. Uh, yeah, again, I am very much I am, uh, happy to see uh, you all have very good understanding on this background thing. Yes, uh, we need flowering plants or the foraging plants uh, to provide some nectar and pollen. Uh, yeah, but water also we, very important to have for the bees. But they they collect water actually. They separately. Now, if you have if you have uh, some kind of water. Um, maybe even a small water bucket in your apiary, they will come and collect water where, whenever they want, right? They bring, they collect water. Uh, but mainly foraging plants are actually important. For the diesel. Okay, now, uh, yeah, uh, we, by providing these plants, we expect them to collect nectar and pollen. You know, nectar is the carbohydrate source for the bees and pollen uh, are the protein source for the bees, right? Okay, now um, now suppose you have already all the equipments with you and you are, you want to start uh, start to establish a kind of apiary, right? You want to start beekeeping. Then you have to think about where to start, right? Where you can keep your colonies, okay? Now, I think uh, every home garden, there may be one, at least one suitable place for this, okay? Not every, or every place, right? Because there may be some places with... Uh, the, the disturbances, right? If you set fire into your garbage and things, right? It is not a good place for you to keep uh, a colony. And if there is a kind of, um, uh, okay, um, now uh, maybe uh, if you frequently disturb uh, the, the vegetations, right? Or if it is a kind of, da, um, right, uh, some pesticide applying uh, location, right? If it is a farmer field, right? So in the middle of the farm field, it is not recommended to keep because um, you know they apply pesticide time to time, especially um, uh, um, uh, neonicotinoids type pesticide, right? So neonicotinoid pesticide can uh, very adverse. I mean, very bad for the bees. Uh, once they expose for the neonicotinoids, what will happen? Uh, they cannot find their way back to their hive, right? So they in the morning they go for the foraging, and after foraging, they if they are exposed to this pesticide, they cannot find their way back. Then they will go somewhere else, right? So that can happen. Therefore, uh, you should not uh, keep the bee colonies in the center of farming field. I mean, if they apply pesticide, but nowadays the, the trend is for the organic farming. Now, if that is the case, if they are doing real organic, right? So it is okay to keep uh, your colonies in the places uh, like farming field. And uh, if you if the places uh, have some water dripping from the, the branches or, or ants like things, you know, in dry zone, um, especially this ecophyla, right, or uh, red ants. Okay, uh, when the red ants are there, they will attack the bees. Uh, I can remember during Vari, uh, during some time back, I mean, Vari area, there was a apiary. The totally the apiary was destroyed by a kind of one bee species. Sorry, one ant species. They will come and destroy the larvae, adult, and all, right? So uh, you have to check whether this place is suitable for, for establishing a, a kind of a new uh, hive. Because um, when we transfer a wild colony, we take them from their original uh, house and we are going to introduce a new house. And if the new house is very bad for them, so it's very, very bad. Ne? So, I mean, uh, the bees are innocent, so they, they cannot. I because by keeping the gate, we do not allow them to go even, right? So therefore our responsibility, it is our responsibility to find a very suitable place, a shady, right? Wet, humid, like, right? Concealed place is a kind of ideal. I'm sure in any home garden, right? Any landscape, there may be at least one or two places like that. So you can go for that one and keep your colony there. Okay. Um, now, uh, yeah. Now, if you find, if you selected an ideal place, right? So then, what we have to do, um, you have to uh, place the colony on a stand. Stand can. Stand can be uh, either concrete made one, right, or a plastic pot like this, right. So the um, uh, or a kind of well um, made um, hole like this, right. So it can be surrounded by a kind of pond at the bottom, okay, with some water. Um, yeah. Now this water is based basically we use to repel the ants. You know, ants can uh, damage the colony, as I said earlier. 
Um, uh, but I found this, the, the middle one, right? It's very easy to uh, establish anywhere. I mean, um, you can have a small um, a tray like things, you can put water there and a plastic, um, uh, plastic or concrete made uh, pot you can use. Uh, maybe you have to put some uh, stones or uh, soil there for to give some weight, right? And on top of that, you can keep your height. And remember, you have to tie it up to the, uh, to the stand by using a, a coconut rope or some other use, uh, suitable string, right? And you can, uh, like in the left, you can give some additional roofing material for that one, right? Um, and also, uh, now when we keep water like this, stagnating water, right? Uh, again, mosquitoes can attack. Uh, I mean, mosquito uh, will breed in these places. Therefore, you have to take some necessary precautions for that. You can put some drip of, uh, maybe some drops of uh, kerosene into that or salt into that, or you can frequently remove the water there. Likewise, right? Aye. And uh, the other thing is uh, that stand actually should not be very high. I mean, very tall or very short. And if it is very tall, it is very difficult for you to uh, handle the colony, right? And if it is very short, again, it is difficult to observe the colony. So ideally, it is uh, maybe two to three feet high, right? So it might be ideal uh, to have. Okay. Now, uh, how to obtain bees, right? Uh, last week also, I told you now we can buy a colony from somewhere. Or sometimes we can capture a wild colony. Or the easiest method is we can obtain some uh, swarming colony. Right? Swarming colony means uh, wild colony during the, their growth period, right? So they multiply, they reproduce the colonies, they reproduce new queens. And these uh, old queens then uh, leave the original colony with the group of workers, what we call swarming colony, right? Uh, in Singhala, we call the gamam mehi, maybe you have heard about that, right? So these gamam mehi or these uh, swarming colonies will uh, sometime hang uh, on a branch or somewhere temporarily until they will find a, a good place to nesting, okay? Now this swarming colony, we can easily capture, right? For that actually you can use a cardboard or a file, right? Uh, like things, so by using this cardboard, you can make a kind of uh, cone-like thing. And then slowly you can take this uh, swarm into that cone and uh, keep it in a new hive. I mean, a new box that you can close it and then they will settle there because there is a ready-made queen there and a considerable number of bees are there, right? So this is the very easiest way of uh, getting colony, right? Call a new colony. Now, uh, one thing you can do is you can uh, make some uh, trapping sign, right? I mean, you can keep some clay pots if it is in dry zone, you can keep some clay pots in some shady places. So then this warming colony will come and settle there. Right, because it is an ideal place for them to make nest. Okay, and if it is up countries or the um, candy-like areas uh, in cooler environment, uh, the clay pots are not work. So you can keep some um, uh, wooden boxes. Right, you can keep some wooden boxes here and there. Then they will come and settle. Okay, now with these old uh, uh, boxes like uh, buckle boxes or some barrel like things also, uh, and ideal places for them to. Um, uh, come and set it. Then later you can uh, uh, transfer them into a hive. Okay. Or if you have uh, some colony already in your apiary, you can divide that one, right? A well grown colony, you can divide into two parts. So by dividing also, you can uh, take, uh, you can get new colonies. Okay, um, here, yes. Okay, now here you can see a transferring uh, of a colony from a natural site to a beehive. Uh, here you can see a colony established in a barrel, uh, in a clay pot, right? Now we can keep this colony as a clay pot for no problem, right? The problem is how we can identify or how we can observe what is going on inside the colony, right? or with the queen cells are there, with the larvae uh, available, or with the queen is there, I mean, with the honey is there. Likewise, we cannot observe if they are inside the uh, clay pot like this, or barrel like this, right? Or some, sometimes we have to replace the comb, right? We have to uh, make the arrangement, uh, modify the arrangement of the comb, right? So we cannot do anything uh, if, the, if we keep uh, the colony like that. Because why I say like this is some people like to keep the colony in, uh, in these clay pots forever, right? I and mean, for, for long. So it's not suitable, right? So don't worry, this box or the, this hive is very much um, 
design uh, for favor for them right so don't think that um, it is not a suitable house for them okay so how we can remove how we can transfer this colony into the um, hive here you can see what we should do actually uh, it is better actually if we can do this in the field but um, in this online method uh, what we can see is just explain like this anyway i think we have some videos ready for you to see uh, at the beginning we need to have a kind of uh, tools that i have explained already the the and, and you have uh, this is actually be smoker and banana stripes uh, banana fibers and small knife a bee catcher uh, and uh, maybe a scissor and uh, somewhat large knife right and the veil so these are some basic thing and also better if you have a, um, a towel also right uh, i mean a uh, new towel right because uh, instead of the crown board we can use a towel at the beginning uh, just to comfort the bees i mean um, uh, then easy to handle okay first what we have to do in the in the third step we have to uh, exert some smoke there right we should uh, we should not uh, split the pot um, blindly we have to exert some um, smoke and should see what is the arrangement what is the arrangement of the comb right otherwise when we split the comb we will break the combs as well when we break the pot we will uh, uh, disturb the uh, comb also right it's not good therefore by putting some uh, uh, smoke you can see how the smoke uh, how the combs are arranged and uh, accordingly you can uh, split the uh, spot like this and you will see they have uh, developed very large comb like this right in the as in the fourth picture then you have to take the combs one by one out of uh, the pot and we have to uh, fix them on frame i think uh, next slide we can see uh, how to uh, select a suitable area yeah here in the fifth uh, image you can see now originally the the comb may be very large right in natural size they produce this much sort of large combs and uh, what we have to do we have to remove if there are any honey right if there are any honey it will be in the top so we have to remove that part and then the larvae and pupa may be in the center so we have to take a very good part uh, and uh, which is fit for the uh, frames of the brood blocks right and then we uh, by using coconut fibers right so you we can fix this comb into the frames one by one like this right so if you have a friend you can ask to uh, help you otherwise you can uh, do it on your own by using this arrangement so here you can see a stem of um, banana right and some uh, twigs will you uh, you can use for the support as a support and do it on your own right so once you uh, cut and remove all, uh, all, almost all the combs good one right if there are some old combs you can uh, you can discard and here you can see some um, uh, pupae in the middle right pupal cases so once you remove all the you know, combs in the uh, in the hive as in the seven, seven, seventh picture so there may be some bees remaining in the pot now you have to scoop them by using your bare hand right uh, time i mean maybe several times you have to do that and you have to transfer them into the hive okay and you have to cover the the, the box by using the crown board now uh, here you don't want to worry because most of these bees cannot sting you because they they are stinger is not developed well they are young still right actually some of them cannot fly even therefore they are very innocent don't worry you have to uh, without uh, crushing any any bees you can scoop them one by one right so no, not one by one i mean a handful of bees you can transfer at a time and uh, when you are doing this actually in some uh, uh, in the middle the queen also will transfer so as soon as the queen also um, transferred the so all the bees will march into the hive without any problem right so maybe next slide we can see such uh, movement ah uh, here okay now we have tarin uh, is it a video or yeah
Okay, I think uh, you had a good look on that video. Uh, Sometimes it may not play well in your uh, device, right? If the, uh, the connection issues are there. Anyway, um, the thing that we have explained uh, clearly um, shown in that video. Here, uh, you can see the queen actually uh, in, the, in the center of the circle, right? So uh, in one uh, moment, you will find the queen is there. Actually, she may not come very easily, right? So she will try her best to retain in the original nest, right? So therefore, when you hand, when you are doing these transferring things, it's very important to not to damage bees because if accidentally if you damage the queen, so it may not good, right? So as soon as if you find, if you see any queen there, you can use this queen catcher and you can take her into the into this one and you can keep uh, inside the hive uh, like in the uh, picture in the bottom. Then all the bees definitely without any hesitation they will come into the you come inside to the hive. Uh, now when you are doing this uh, in the middle of this um, uh, event, right? Uh, if bees are uh, already, I mean, going inside, right? Without any hesitation, if you are going or marching inside, then it is a good indication uh, for the queen has already transferred into the hive, right? So uh, you don't want to uh, go and see whether the queen is there, whether I caught the queen or, or likewise. So work, um, I mean, you just uh, follow the guidelines. I mean, just scoop the bees like that and accidentally she will go uh, inside. Then all the bees will go follow her, right? And uh, in, if it is not, uh, I mean, if we still hang around somewhere, uh, sometimes the queen can escape during this one. Now uh, we have experience like that. So when we do this, sometimes queen can escape and you have to uh, be vigilant whether the, uh, the colonies is uh, settling somewhere uh, in nearby branches, right? Uh, you have to look around sometime. Uh, the queen and a set of bees may go and um, uh, settle somewhere in trees nearby, right? In such case, again, you have to capture them and um, uh, bring them into the uh, hive, right? Remember, you have to keep the gate always on this time, right? Otherwise, um, sometime they may leave the place. So, shall we see? The, okay. I see this is also kind of video, isn't it? Yes, uh, now the colonies are already transferred from the clay pots to the hive, right? And then you can establish the, uh, the hive on a stand like that, that I have already explained earlier, right? You can buy this sort of concrete poles also, which is available in the market, and you can make a small pond like that in the, in the bot at the bottom. Now it gives some uh, looks also, right, to your home garden, right? It will um, increase the beauty 
I mean, some add some beauty to your uh, landscape. You can, if you have already uh, some ponds in your landscape, you can use uh, that ponds also, right? In the middle, you can keep. But provided that you should be able to reach the uh, colony time to time because we want to see what is going on inside, and sometimes we need to feed them with some sugar syrup, right? And now when we establish this one for the first time, so sometimes these are in, in under stress, right? So therefore it is better if you can give some sugar uh, feeding, right? For maybe two to three uh, days at least, right? At the beginning. And then they will initiate uh, their crop growth also, right? And uh, maybe within uh, one week time, uh, you will see, no, not actually no need uh, uh, to see one, I mean one week. Maybe within two to three days, if they accept this place, you can see the bees are bringing some pollen, right? So if the bees are bringing some pollen, pollen uh, now their legs are, you can see uh, full of pollen at that time. And then that's mean they have already accepted the new place and they are settled, right? So the queen is also happy now. She may be laying eggs. Now actually you can remove the gate, right? But if you keep the gate for a long time, Again, it is a disturbance for the bees, right? When you um, realize the bees are well set there and the queens also now starting laying eggs, right? And if they are bringing uh, pollen, you can uh, remove the gate and keep it somewhere else for the future use. And also you can uh, observe, right? You can keep some comb out and uh, check actually whether new eggs are there, right? So likewise, time to time, we have to uh, observe the colony. Actually, um, there are something that we have to do as a routine practices, right? So we have to check uh, inside the, for the any pest and we have to clean the bottom uh, board. So these management practices actually we can talk in future webinars, right? So for, the, for today, I think um, we are done. So if you have any questions, uh, Tarindu, we can have, uh, we can get some questions, right? So, Yes, I think uh, that's all for the day. Yes, Dr. Anwar, it is time for some questions from our participant. And Dilani is asking if the queen cage is used, is there a chance of accepting her by the other bees? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, if the queen cage is used, is there a chance of accepting her by? the other bees? Uh, actually, the question is not that clear to me. Uh, queen cage, queen cage, uh, yeah. Now, suppose uh, we we, keep, we, we uh, use a queen cage, then we, we can keep this queen cage inside the new, new hive, right? Uh, we do not, as I told you at the beginning, we should not uh, introduce the new queen right away, right? We should give some time for them to adapt uh, to new queen. Um, actually, now in other countries, we, they always maintain new new queens in their colony, right? Because when the queen is old, getting old, the egg laying capacity will reduce. As a result of that, the productivity also uh, reduce in the colony. Therefore, uh, we need not to keep the same queen for a long time. So time to time, we can introduce, uh, and if suppose uh, you have a very good colony in your apiary, right? And there's another colony that is very weak. Right? So in such case, we can remove the existing queen and we can introduce a very good queen from a uh, healthy one for that one. So for that case, in that case, we can use this queen cage like thing, right? I don't know whether I answered her question because I, I didn't got the questions, question well, right? Okay. Um, so Tandra, there is another question. Uh -huh. uh, how can we identify the queen correctly? Yes, it is very easy now at the beginning. I mean, if you were in the first seminar, uh, so first webinar, we, we describe uh, how to identify the web, uh, the queen actually uh, among the other uh, cast, right? Uh, well, it is very big, I mean, not very big, I mean, um, significantly uh, big than other, bigger than the other workers, right? So her abdomen is red in color and it is long, right? And it, it, some, it has some golden color, I mean, in the abdomen, okay? Uh, and drones, you know, uh, the males are dark in color, right? And they have blunted body. Uh, yeah, in, by using that. And also the queen is guarded with some other set of bees, what you call queen court, right? Uh, yeah, now if you are given the drawn worker and queen, definitely you will identify because of the, her size and shape, right? It is not any, a difficult task actually. Yeah, 
So, Dr. Anur, uh, Vinu, yeah. Vinu is asking when extracting wax, can the cells on the either side of the comb be cut off with a sharp blade and the mm -hmm. midsection placed in the hive for the bees? Will they rebuild the cells on the older base we keep back? Yes, yes. Good question, actually. Now, when we when we uh, harvest honey, uh, we, we just remove the cap of these cells, actually. We don't cut the uh, well as it is. I mean, we don't disturb the well. We just remove the cap, right? Therefore, we, uh, we don't uh, disturb the cell, actually. Therefore, once you harvested honey, you can keep it back and they don't want to build again anything and they can right away uh, store honey. And uh, the one that you ask actually can be done now, you know, we can use some uh, foundation comb, right? Foundation comb me, we give only the meat ball, right? We give only the meat ball and then uh, bees, all bees have to do is they can uh, build up the cells in either uh, direction, right? Now it is something like that you are given land with the, uh, with the kind of uh, foundation in it, right? So what you have to do, you can build up your uh, walls and get the, take the roof and complete the house. Likewise, we give the foundation, the middle wall, then the bees, they will quickly build the, they will quickly complete the, uh, the cells and they will uh, store honey. Actually, it's a good way uh, to initiate their um, growth. Normally we use actually foundation crops. Yeah. So Dr. Anur, there is a... Mm, Good information from our one of our, one of our attendees, mm -hmm. uh, Sumri. So she actually placed a clay pot soon after the previous session, and he got lucky to attract a colony uh -huh. on that. Right. So he uh, he have a question. Uh, question. The question is, uh, it has been a month, and I have let them be in the pot itself. Should I move them to a hive? And if I have, when? Is it advisable? Uh, yes, actually, we are very happy to hear now some of our uh, attendees are doing beekeeping now, right? At least you have some try, right? Um, yes, now when you keep this clay pots, definitely you, will, you can attract some colonies, especially during the sowing time, right? Um, now, when you got a new, uh, new colony, it is better if you keep it for at least uh, one and a half months to uh, settle there. I mean, to uh, grow there, right? And time to time, you can apply some smoke and check whether the combs are developing, right? Now, if there are two or three, or maybe two to three combs are almost developed, then you can transfer into a hive. Uh, as I explained at the beginning, it is always uh, good to transfer it into a hive because otherwise you cannot do other management practices, right? So we cannot observe or inspect anything what, um, regarding colony if you keep uh, as it is in the clay pot. I know personally some people like to keep the bees in clay pots, but the thing is, if you, um, I mean, if you carefully split it, you can reuse the pot and you can transfer the colony and you can keep it again somewhere, then uh, the new colony will come because the used pot actually somewhat uh, kind of uh, imitation for the new colonies, right? So when you keep these uh, pots, remember it should be uh, free from any debris or any impurities there. It should be clean, and if it is a previously used one, it is it is much better. It is much better. It's a kind of in a um, encouragement for the for other bees to come and settle, right? Yeah, maybe you can keep uh, one or one and a half months to develop the bee colony, and then uh, observe the growth. But you can use a torch even, right? A uh, kind of torch after uh, uh, for exerting some uh, smoke. You can check whether the combs are there then the growth is good, uh, then translate. So, yes, uh, Dr. Anura, one last question. Uh, one of our participants asking that, uh, can't we attract a swarming directly to a man-made hive? Uh, yes, yes. Now, I told you, um, now, in, if it is in a uh, country, so uh, uh, maybe candy or some, Novel epitia, Hatton like up countries, right? Uh, these clay pots will not work. Clay pots will not work. So, uh, if you keep this uh, hive, mad made hive, then they will come and settle there, right? Now, for example, Binduru Eva, Bandara I have seen many, many times. Uh, they they directly come and settle in, uh, in a hive like uh, the new 
uh, man made bar right because clay pots will not work there because of the uh, cool uh, uh, temperature there right uh, yeah you can have a try but remember the the hive should be very clean as i told you earlier sometime because the cockroaches are come and uh, settle there they lay eggs there then bees uh, may not stay uh, because it's very stink for them so they they they, they will not settle there they have to you have to clean the uh, hive time to time uh, then have a try definitely they will come and settle uh, maybe you don't want to keep the gate right please remove the gate and just keep the and also you can remove the uh, the frames also right you can keep you can keep one or two frames there if you want you can remove the most of the frames and uh, maybe super also you can remove only brood box you can keep uh, without the gate right so definitely some queen and some colonies will attract right so now we have come to the end of the today's session and before we wind up please register with your correct email address and then only you shall receive the feedback form and you also will be qualified to be awarded with the e certificate of participation at the end of the webinar series all the participants who have registered will have feedback form for the today's session and please fill the fill and submit the sheet so dr anur i would like to thank you on behalf of dilma t and dilma conservation for your valuable time and sharing information with us today and thank you all the participants for joining us today hopefully our next session, uh, webinar session shall be held on 24th of august and so now it is time to wind up today's session and we invite you all for our next webinar session in that session you will learn how honey bee talk each other Thank 